They're, they, they've about had it as well as us that are even getting out have had it. And um, we want to drop something off that's tangible, something that is um, something we've painted, which would be these frames. But then we also have a message. We have a really nice DVD. It's an hour and 10 minutes long. That is a Christmas pageant play that they have filmed that they do every year live at a church. And we were able to secure a bunch of those free. The lady donated them to us because they were about 15 or $20 a piece. And then we're going to put those in there, a letter from the church, a gospel track, the frame, the ornament, and then we're going to deliver them to their homes. And uh, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit as we get started. Um, so I'm going to have Tim, wherever he's at. Oh, um, uh, yeah, could you just tell him he's got to start live stream? He did already? Oh, so this was all live, huh? That's right. I'll just make sure that we are live stream. Oh, is that what it is? That's how we know. <laughs> oh. It's okay. All righty. Well, uh, good evening, um, and we're glad you're here tonight. And we're going to go ahead and start our service. We're going to go about 20 minutes or so. I thought it would be real appropriate and proper for us to take time to think about evangelism and what does that mean and uh, how does that play out. And so we'll give ourselves a challenge on that. And then our live stream will, will, will turn off at that time and the tables are set up, the plastic is down, and uh, Miss um, Laura at that time will give instructions on uh, what to do. And there's still a few more people I know that are coming tonight, about seven or eight more, and then we'll be able to get the frames done. That's the goal, is to get the frames um, painted um, tonight. All right, let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll take a look at God's Word, and then together we will uh, fellowship and have a, a, a great time together. All right, Father, thank you now. Uh, the most important thing we do is what we're doing tonight, uh, fellowship, pray, encourage one another laugh, uh, share with um, one another, and then also look at your word. That's always so crucial for us that are believers. And we pray that you would be honored and glorified in everything we do tonight. Uh, thank you that we can reach out to our community. We're thankful for the uh, way that you have allowed the local church to be energized, to go out and do your work, your mission, your will. Thank you now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to just say on the offset of this is um, how many of you remember Dave Carter? Some of you might not have met him, but those of you did. He passed away uh, last week, and he was having some trouble with his heart. He was 84, going to be 85, I think, um, in October. I think it'd be March. Thank you. He'd been 85 in March, and um, he, he passed, and he's, he's, he's with the Lord. He gave me his testimony many times when he was eight years old. The city of Chicago, he was down here visiting, he went to a church, and there he heard the gospel, and as an eight-year-old young boy, he asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be his Savior. We got the benefits of spending the last year and a half or so with him, two years, and what a joy he was. I always said he had that little look on his face. You know how like a little child looks um, on their face when they get their hands caught in the cookie jar? You know, mom comes around the corner and it's in there. And that's that look, that impish, I think you told me that, that impish look that he would get every once in a while. He was a joy. And uh, I'm so glad that we got a little slice of his life. He, we're the better for it. And he's home with the Lord now. But be praying for the family. And as they, um, of course, will be um, mourning his loss. His sister made a wonderful comment to me as I talked to her yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. She said to me, you know, uh, it's so nice, you know, that now my father is gone, not nice that he's gone, but that he is gone, is that there was nothing between my father and me. We had a great relationship. You know, let's make sure if we have something against our parents or those that are older, let's get those things right. Because we never know. And you don't want to be sitting around saying, boy, I wish I would have cleared that up. I wish I would have taken time to, you know, say I love you or taking time to, to, to clear anything up. I'm not saying that there is anything, but, it, but if there is, if you would um, make sure you do that. I thought that was a wonderful comment she said, that um, with her father's passing, 
she could say that uh, she loved her father and had a good relationship with him. And that's not always the case, as you know. All right, tonight, um, if you take your Bibles, we're going to be in Romans chapter 9. We're going to take about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and I'm going to walk through it. Um, so go to Romans chapter 9, just kind of get your hand there. That's where we're going to be. Uh, tonight we gather uh, not just to paint wooden frames, though we are going to do that. We gather together because the hour is late, the need is great, and together we can reach our community. So that's what we want to do. Yes, we're, putting, we're painting wooden frames tonight, but it's because the hour's late. Uh, Christ could come at any moment, you know that. He could, he could tarry for five years, ten years, fifteen, a hundred years, but the need is certainly great. And together, in the unity of the local church, we can have a powerful impact on our community. And that's what we want to do through what we're going to do tonight. Another way, too, that we tangibly reach out is through supporting missionaries. This church supports missionaries that um, are a voice of the gospel uh, speaking beyond this community to lands clear around the globe. They're in many different places around this uh, world that tonight they are ministering to others and trying to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our mission theme at Faithway Baptist Church is simply this, across the street, that's here. Let's go across the street. Let's reach the homes in our community and across the sea there as well. So not only do we want to reach right here in our own neighborhood, our neighbors, our, 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 our workmates, those that we come in contact with at the gas station or wherever we are. We want to be able to cross the street to our homes, but then we want to also support those that are across the sea uh, doing the work. We want to reach all the neighborhoods of Hampshire as well as throughout the world. Every child, every mom, every dad, every grandma, every grandpa needs to hear a clear presentation of the gospel. And we're plan A. You say, well... What's plan B? There is no plan B. There's only a plan A. We're it. And our harvest is the generation that we live in. This is the time. There's no reason to wait. We're not waiting for the harvest to be there. The harvest is ready. We just need to go. Some texts, when you look at the scriptures uh, in the Word of God, are noticeably clear. When you look at it, the way that it's phrased and the language in there, there's no doubt about it that uh, what, the, what the writer is trying to, uh, uh, for us to see. It paints a clear picture of what the writer is thinking. We have such a passage to consider tonight on the subject of evangelism. So let's look at our text. It's found in Romans chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Apostle Paul, who was saved on the road to Damascus, uh, sees the bright light and he realizes that this Christ, this one that he said was a heretic, was not only the Son of God, but he was God. And so as Paul began to mature, he had a great burden for his own people. And in chapter number 9, uh, he paints a truth for all of us of a, of, of a great burden and a heavy heart for people. He says in Romans chapter 9, verse, I mean, chapter 9, verse 1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience, you have one of those, also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. That's pretty powerful. That's like when you go to court and you put your hand on the, the Bible and you say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And then in verse number two, he says that I have a great heaviness. Have you ever had a great heaviness before? You know what that feels like? If you're a parent, you've, you've probably sensed that. If you're married, you probably have sensed that. And a continual sorrow in my heart. So there's a great heaviness and a continual sorrow in Paul's heart. And this is what he says, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. In other words, he says, I want to reach Israel so much with the gospel that I'd be willing to give my, he can't, but I'd be willing to give up my salvation for them to be saved. Think about that. Would you do that? Would you say, okay, listen, you can't, but I'll transfer you or give you my salvation and I'll take your place in hell knowing that that's where you would go. That, that's a real heart and a real burden. And, and Paul had that for the Israelites. He said, I could wish my, that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kingsmen, according to the flesh. He's talking about the Israelites. 
That's the type of burden that you can only have if you've been forgiven. If you understand the grace and the mercy that you have, it's just by His grace that we're here. We are what we are by Him, that our sins are forgiven. And, and that's what Paul is saying here. He's, he, he, he has such a burden for others. Boy, what would happen if we had a burden like that for our community? You would go to your neighbors. You'd go to your workmates. You would take time to share the gospel at every turn that you possibly could. And that's what Paul was doing. Everywhere he went, he wanted to get the gospel out. He knew that when people die without Jesus Christ, they are separated from him for all eternity. So a driving force behind all evangelism must be a sense of urgency. If you see no urgency, then you won't go. You don't accidentally share your faith. You have to be prepared every day, knowing when you leave your home, that God is going to put a divine appointment in front of you. It might be a stranger. It might be, it might be the lady that, or the man that you see down at the gas station. It might be where you go and buy your groceries. But you have to go out and become a human track rack. Everywhere you go, giving the gospel, ready always to give every person the hope that resides in you. So there must be a sense of urgency. Let me ask you, uh, rhetorically, do you have a sense of urgency? Or is it when, it can, when it's convenient? Or it's forced upon you and you have to share, share your faith? Or are you proactive looking every day, everywhere you go, for that opportunity to share your faith? Well, the best example always is Jesus Christ. And Jesus saw the urgency. It's found, if you want to turn your Bibles, to the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36. Uh, Jesus comes up on a hillside where the multitudes have gathered together knowing that he was going to come. And because he was going to come, a lot of people were there to be fed, free, to be healed. They were not necessarily there for the gospel. But when Jesus came up on the hillside, he said this, he said, but when he saw the multitudes, so you have to picture in your mind all these people on the hillside. The Bible doesn't tell us how many, but there was quite a few there packed up on the hillside. He was moved with compassion on them. In other words, he didn't see them uh, as just people or, or, or annoyances or a problem. He saw them in their lostness. He looked and he said, oh my, look at them. They're scattered abroad as a sheep without a shepherd. There's no one to watch for their soul. And he was moved with great compassion. Have you ever had that feeling in the pit of your stomach there? We call it butterfly sometimes, where you're just kind of anxious. It's just got that, that feeling there. That's what he felt. It was like balled up tight right here in the pit of his stomach. And he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. They were in great danger. He realized that if they were to die, they would die a Christless eternity. And that bothered him. So he looks at his disciples. The Bible says in verse 37, Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. He said, look, look at all the people. Look at all the doors in Hampshire. Look at all, I want you to count all the doors you pass on the way home. All of them need to hear the gospel. And God has planted us here to do that. Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. In other words, there are few that want to go. So Christ sees the urgency of the moment. And he says in verse number 38, Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest would send forth what? Laborers. So in other words, what he's saying here is that they would be cast out into the harvest. That, that it is important for us to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers. But you can't pray for others to go if you're not willing to go. That'd be a hypocritical prayer. Lord, send somebody else because I'm not going to go. And that isn't just necessarily overseas, but that is across the street or across the seas. So without a sense of urgency towards evangelists, evangelism to go, the command will not be carried out. If you don't see a need to go, if you don't see the urgency of the moment to go, the command will never be carried out. 
The proper biblical view of the urgency of the gospel has cast forth many missionaries, missionaries to every corner of the earth. They have seen what Christ saw. They saw people lost in sin with no hope. And because of that, they went. They were compelled. They were like uh, Paul was in Romans 9. I must go. Now, God might not be calling you to get on a plane and sell everything you have and uh, live in another country, but may I tell you that he is compelling you to reach your community, to reach your neighbors, to reach your street, to reach the doors that you can reach, to get into the homes. I know one thing right there, if you would have gone to my mom's house before she got saved, she would have never opened the door seeing you standing out there probably with something religious in your hand. But it was an open door for my wife and I because we were there for the meals. <laughs> we were there. And same thing, you need to reach not only your family first, but then your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, and then the community as well. So we need to go. It's a command to go. Uh, many have gone overseas and sacrificed the cost of their own lives, safety, comfortability, and family ties, but we bear that same, that same urgency here in America. We cannot allow ourselves to lapse into a state of appeasement, a state of apathy, a, a, a state of aloofness. It is time to mobilize in unity and carry out the mission before us. You are never to sacrifice your own family to go reach others. You are to take care of your family. But God would not tell us to reach our communities if there wasn't enough time. So you need to reorganize or prioritize your timing. And so that you can go out so often and hit the doors in your community. It'd be a shame to reach all the homes in your community and lose your family. So you need to raise your family. But you also need to find time to reach some of the doors in our community. And that's what we're doing by this project. You are helping in a way to put the gospel in a bag and get it out to the community. That's just one way. You can knock on doors. You can call people. You can meet them at work. You can take them out for breakfast. You can uh, do what we're doing, just uh, pass out literature to their door, whatever that would be. But we need to mobilize, and it needs to be in unity because it's and carried out the mission before us. So, like I said, we're going to end here in about four or five minutes. So let me just end with these few points here for you. Here's a few things to consider uh, that shows that there's an urgency of evangelism. Uh, Jesus, Jesus will soon return. We don't know when, but he is coming back. Revelation 22.20, 20, you can write that down and look at it later. It says, he which testify these things say, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Second, hell's a real place. If you don't believe that, then why would you go and share your faith? But hell's a real place. The Bible says in Revelation 20, 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Number three, the harvest is now. The harvest is now. Uh, John 4, 35 says, Say not ye that there are four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, just as Jesus says, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Just go out and walk around your town. And you will see all the people in their lostness, needing the gospel. Uh, we are to warn. We're commanded to warn. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 19, says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not a warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but the blood will I require at thy hands. In other words... If we go and we warn our community, then we are free because if they choose not, what can we do? We can't make them drink water. We can only give them the gospel. And that's what God says. Just be in your neighborhood. Just be all about sharing the gospel everywhere you go. It is their responsibility once they hear it of what they're going to do with it. That's not our fault, but shame on us. If God says go and warn them and we don't, It'd be like a catastrophe going to happen to Hampshire. 
Uh, there, there was a community somewhere where a dam was going to break and they failed to warn the people thinking they could get it fixed in time. The dam broke and hundreds of people died, unaware. They should have warned the people. Shame on them. The blood is upon their hands. Same thing with us. The blood is upon our hands when we don't warn our community, our friends, our neighbors about the pending doom. Um, personal responsibility. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9.16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is, is unto me if I preach not the gospel. We need to be gospel-focused, gospel-centered. We need to turn the conversation when we meet people and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Someone did that for you. Maybe a Sunday school teacher. Maybe a mom. Maybe a dad. Maybe a grandpa. Maybe a grandmother. Maybe a friend. My youngest daughter was saved at a sleepover. She uh, had heard a message that week on hell and was under some conviction already. And for some reason, the girl said to her, uh, that was her friend. They were eight, eight years old, I believe, seven or eight. Asked her at the sleepover if she knew she was going to heaven. My daughter said no. And uh, she led her to the Lord right there up on her bunk bed. Praise God. She was gospel focused. She saw that she needed to ask that question. That question changed my whole daughter's life. Changed everything for all eternity. And in closing, um, in closing, world evangelism is the local church's responsibility. God works through the local church to send qualified men and women out into the harvest. The Bible tells us in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations that they shall come, um, that, I'm sorry, then, then shall the end come. So as we go out and reach, uh, the end is coming as well. Faithway needs to have this same urgency. It is our responsibility to hold the ropes for others to go and support them by prayer when they go overseas. But it's our responsibility to reach our doors. We don't need a missionary to come here and move here. We're here. Let them go where there is no church. What a shame and reproach that would be if we had to bring somebody here because we were not doing what God has told us to do. So this January, as I lay out, the vision for next year I will be proposing we take on three new missionaries in the year 2021 so that we can have more people out beyond the reaches of our little Jerusalem with the gospel also. And I will also propose we take on and invest in one college student as he prepares for full-time ministry. What a joy that would be to receive a little check in his mail once a, once a month to help him get through school so he can study and be prepared to take churches like this when we get, um, which none of us are, old and gray. There'll be no laughing. Um, pointing, yes, but laughing, no. Uh, Faithway desires, desires to preach the, God, the Christ to each person in every town, in every nation, using wisdom from God to warn of the wrath to come. To see souls saved and then see him mature in Christ. Last verse and then we're done. Whom we preach warning every man in Colossians 1.28. Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. We're just not to win people to the Lord. We're, not, we're supposed to win them and then teach them. So they can grow and, and, and become part of the body of Christ. And use their talents in a powerful way. Uh, within the, the local church as well. So what we're doing tonight is fun. What, we, what we're doing tonight is going to be a great time of fellowship, but it's also very important, and that is we are doing evangelism. By painting these and getting them ready to go out, we are, uh, in a tangible way, going to hand out to 60 people the gospel in a few days' time, and you'll be part of that. And some so. Some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. You've never, you've never saved anybody, either have I. But God uses us either in the, in the planting, the sowing, the planting, the watering, but God gives the increase. So let's, let's make sure we um, have our mind on that.
Alrighty, I, um, if you would go to back and just let Tim know he can turn off live streaming in a moment. We're going to say goodbye to our live streamers right after we uh, pray, and we are going to have some fellowship and some fun doing some painting. Now, this is not like a food fight. We're not going to have a paint war or anything like that. We're going to try to not paint anything but the frames. Now, occasionally, I know if I get a paint, I'm going to paint these girls for sure, but um, you know, don't get it all over the floor. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for Christ. Thank you for the joy we have that we can, as a family, a unit, a church, come together to accomplish something that's very worthy and well-pleasing to you, and that is telling people about your Son, Jesus Christ. Help that be the case, we pray in Christ's name, amen. All righty, I will, uh, good, Ms. Harmony is going to come. Thank you, those of you on live stream, um, for partaking in this. I know it's a shorter service because we are going to uh, go to painting and um, enjoy your time at home and we'll, we'll enjoy our time here. Thank you very much. All right, we'll wait for the thumbs up.